if, if, we're, if we don't have any questions, we're going to take a look at Amazon stock. So Amazon, a company with a $1.6 trillion valuation. Just crazy. Who would have ever thought we'd be here just a couple years ago before they even got to $1 trillion and now they're up past $1.5 trillion a share. So it's nutty. And as you guys can see, if you guys have taken my online walkthrough, you guys would know that I'm a fan of a lower P.E. ratio, something around mm, for a growth company, something around 35 between 35 and 25. Well, this company trades at around a 121 times P.E. ratio. And if you guys think that's rich, Amazon is actually a company that notoriously trades at a higher P.E. ratio. Uh, I believe a couple years ago when I was looking at the stock, it was trading at around a 600 times P.E. ratio. So I've been missing the boat on Amazon every time just because I'm not willing to settle for that high P.E. ratio. And it's just crazy because it, it never comes down to like below 100 times P.E. ratio. It's just crazy. Let's check the forward P.E. ratio on this company. Forward P.E. of around 111. So it is down slightly, but still like, geez, that's a that's such a rich P.E. ratio. It's just nutty how crazy that how rich that is. But yeah, we'll take a look at their financials and see what we're getting into when we purchase a company like Amazon. First and foremost, we'll take a look at their um, latest earnings results. They uh, It's hit and miss every quarter. Um, it looks like when they miss, analysts drop the bar a little bit and Amazon exceeds on expectations. And then the following quarter, Amazon raises the bar or analysts raise the bar a little bit and Amazon misses on that. And so this this previous quarter was just the ultimate finesse for Amazon. I don't know if you guys saw the TikTok video I made on it, but it was just like um, it was a guy saying in March he was an, an Amazon investor, and it's a guy saying uh, Jeff Bezos, the stock is falling under two thousand dollars a share. You got to do something. And then Bezos is pretty much like, watch this. And then he tells Wall Street, hey, we're gonna we're gonna have a rough quarter. This whole coronavirus thing, we're gonna get hit hard. And so analysts are like, okay, we'll lower your EPS guidance or whatever. And, and then Amazon just comes and blows away the expectations completely. So this was just a baller move by Jeff Bezos right there. So consistency, not really. Let's take a look at revenues and earnings. So as we can see, revenues are very consistently on an upward trend. Same with net income. It's very, very just um, subtle, but it is gradually getting there. And Amazon with these monster revenues, look at this. In one year... In 2019, they reported $280 billion in revenue. That's crazy. Those are Apple type numbers right there. Their earnings are only about $12 billion. So very slim profit margins right there. But I mean, you've got the revenue. All you have to do is figure out how to make this into more profits, how to cut costs, cut capital expenditures, operating expenses, and stuff like that um, in order to increase your margins. And this is a company that I don't know if it's really a tech company, if it's really a growth company getting to 20, 30 or 40 profit margins. That's that's going to be crazy. So it's definitely priced for future growth because they're very capable of becoming very profitable. So we're going to assume that Amazon is just a normal company that historically does not trade at a high valuation. And we're going to see around what price I would buy the stock at total revenue this past these past 12 months was $320 billion, so they're on track to beat last year's total revenue already. But last year's was $280 billion, previous was $230 billion, and before that, in 2017, was $177 billion. And you guys can see their growth is just huge. It's, it's crazy, and uh, it's consistent, which is great. Uh, and they're definitely going to be doing over $300 billion this year. It's just crazy. With coronavirus, it's going to boost everything. Net income trailing 12 months, $13 billion. Okay, so they passed the $12 billion mark. Last year, they only did 11.5. year before that, they did 10. And in 2017, they only did $3 billion in profit. So the following year, they tripled their profit. Ridiculous. Crazy. So Amazon is super hot, super expensive. But is it super worth it at the price it's trading at now? Let's check their balance sheet. Let's go down here. Let's look at assets. Total cash on hand for Amazon sits at $55 billion. It's pretty damn good. That's twice as much as Facebook has. And I want to say about half 
as Apple has. Let's take a look at total current assets. So this is cash plus investments plus anything that can be liquidated quickly. Um, and this is $96 billion in current assets. So about $100 billion. So if Amazon has a bad quarter, no need to sweat. They got that $100 billion in the bank account to quickly save them from anything. So total assets now sits at $225 billion. Monster. The only other company I can really compare this to, guys, is Apple. Um, it's just dominance. So they have an asset to death to debt ratio of a 1.38, which is great. Anything above a one, a two, a three is above a three is phenomenal. Anything above a one, you're healthy. Uh, just means that you have more assets than liabilities, which is always a great healthy thing for for a company. It's looking great for Amazon so far, but like I said, I'm gonna value this as if it were just a regular company and it wasn't priced so much for growth. So we're getting a lot into hypotheticals. I'm not saying that it's ever gonna hit the price that I'm about to say because it may never, it might never come down from this crazy valuation. Okay, let's take a look at forward EPS for this company. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the forward EPS and multiply it by the average PE ratio for this company. And I'm not gonna do it for this company. I'm gonna do it for the industry uh, and just assuming that they're in big tech, someone like a Microsoft with their cloud computing and someone like a Walmart. So I'm gonna find a mix between the two and just price them, like I said, somewhere between a 25 to 35 times PE ratio. So first and foremost, we find the forward EPS and you guys can do intrinsic values and stuff like that. I'm not an expert on intrinsic value. I don't, I've never done it like in a successful way, but when I've seen people do it and I do my method, we usually come out around the same price, give or take 5% here and there. You can never value a company 100% as a shareholder because you don't have that inside information that the CEO and the management team has. Can I find it? Oh, I know where to find it, uh, analysis, okay. So average forward EPS for next year estimated to be about $44.35 a share. So what we're going to do is on my calculator, I'm going to do 44.35. And let's say Amazon's just a regular company. So I'm going to multiply this times a 35 times profit multiple. So a PE ratio, we're going to do times 35. And we're going to get a number that just seems so ridiculous. The number I got, guys, and let me just, let me have some fun with this inspect element, just so we can see what it would look like if it ever happened. Okay, here's the number I got. So if Amazon were to ever hit $1,552 a share, then I would definitely say buy the stock right now. But right now, Currently, it's sitting at what three thousand something. I didn't even get a good look at the stock price. Three thousand something. It's just absurdly high, but it is positioned for growth. So if you're invested in Amazon right now, I'm not saying sell the stock because it's definitely going somewhere in the future. Okay, there we go. It refreshed. But wasn't it fun looking at one thousand five hundred just for a little bit? Like I said, Amazon always trades rich. It's hard to meet it at a fair valuation. Okay, what are the usual P.E. ratio for growth stocks and value stocks? The P.E. ratio for growth stocks, it can be all over the place. There's stocks that are just hyped to like oblivion, like an Amazon or a Tesla that just trade in the hundreds times P.E. ratios. But typically, what I've noticed is like it's usually around 25 to 35 times P.E. ratio. Better to buy Apple before the split or does it really matter? So here's the thing, guys. I used to tell people it doesn't matter if you buy the Apple before or after the split, but it does matter. And I'm going to show you guys why. So Apple has something that is called a dividend, right? And if you guys have taken my course or if you guys have been investing for a while, you know what a dividend is. It's literally a paycheck from the stock just because you own it. So the dividend X date is uh, August 7th, which is today. Damn. Okay. So if you guys own, uh, if you guys own Apple stock right now, then you will be paid a dividend on August 13th. I think you have to hold Apple stock through the 13th to be paid that dividend, which is going to be $3 and 28 cents a share. 
but I'm not saying buy Apple just for the dividend because it's really not a whole lot of money, guys. So you're you're paying four hundred and forty five dollars for a three dollar check. And I'm sorry, I'm wrong. This three dollars is is paid annually. So you divide this by four, and that's how much they pay every quarter per share. So it's not all about the dividend, but it does make a difference. So when people say does it doesn't make a difference, when should I be buying Apple stock? So for me, I already own, what is it, 55 shares of Apple. So I'm sitting pretty, I'll collect the dividend. But unless you guys are super long term on Apple, I wouldn't be buying it right now. The, the valuation is just a little rich for me, sitting at a 35 times PE ratio. Apple normally trades at around 15, 17 times. So it's trading about two times higher than it than it usually does um and that's just with hysteric hysteria in the market right now um lots of people getting into stock market investing getting onto robin hood for the first time because they're bored during quarantine but it does make a difference if you buy apple right now um opposed to if you were to buy apple literally on monday because you will collect that dividend if you already own apple as of today and if you if you buy Apple after today, you won't collect this quarter's dividend. But there's but Apple pays a dividend every quarter, so four times a year. Uh, can you do a quick rundown of Square? Looks solid. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Alex, because I've been getting a lot of people that ask me about Square. This is a mobile payment company, from what I understand. Uh, I see people using this at local football games. When you go to the concession stand, they got the little Square thing on their phone. You just swipe your card on it, and you. Uh, you pay that way, which is super convenient. Market capitalization of this company is sitting pretty at $65 billion, which just means you multiply the total shares that this company has times the stock price, and then you get the overall value of the company. I, I understand there's confusion out there of what market cap really means, but all it is is how much Wall Street is valuing the whole company at pretty much. Okay, so a P.E. ratio. <laughs> Okay, I thought Amazon's PE ratio was high, but this company just blew them away. But if you're gonna make a statement, you make a statement. <laughs> but this doesn't necessarily mean they're overvalued, it could just mean that they're newly profitable and they're barely getting the ball rolling on profits. So it's nothing really to, to sweat at. So they're making 64 cents of profit per share. So for every share you buy at $146, only 46 cents of that is actual or 64 cents of that is actual profit in the company let's go down here let's look at earnings so they have been profitable for at least a year as we can see the trend here this time last year they reported a beat a beat the following quarter and then q1 2020 which was uh i believe right before covid and uh, this was like january february and march so just getting into COVID, they were down huge. I don't know what happened. Maybe they reinvested some profits into the company and they didn't make a whole lot of, actually they lost money that quarter. Yeah, in a big way. <laughs> and then I love what they did here. I bet you they pulled an Amazon here where they're like, uh, yeah, COVID's gonna be really harsh on us. We're gonna have a bad quarter. <laughs> and they just came out and they're like, uh, yeah, sorry, we're gonna lose five cents of EPS this, this next quarter, so don't be too bullish on us. And then they come out and report 18 cents in profit per share. I love that. Okay, let's take a look at, so in a lot of ways, when we look at revenue and net income for Square, they look very similar to Amazon. Uh, and also with PE ratio, they look similar to Amazon. But as we can see, we have a consistent revenue growth and an upward trajectory for revenue here for the past four years. Net income, a little bit of hit and miss, but it looks like in 2019, they made huge progress to finally be profitable. So we can see the past three years, they have not been profitable. So this is great, guys. It, it means that this past year, they finally became profitable. So that, that helps me justify their ridiculously high PE ratio a little bit. They're just growing into that since they're barely starting to get profitable. But look at this, $4 billion, uh, 4 .7 billion, so let's call it $5 billion in total revenue. And only one third of a billion dollars is actual profit. So I think this company can really scale up their profits just because of how simple their product is where really they just sell this device and all they have to do is collect a little commission fee off of each sale that's made through a square device. Total revenue trailing 12 months, $5.8 billion in total revenue. It's looking like they're going to beat last year's revenue. Well, 
surprise surprise thanks to coronavirus and and sales and everything like that i'm not too familiar with squares products i know they have that little square thing that you attach to your phone uh, i don't know if they have anything else but i would have figured that they'd be way down on sales uh because people less people are going to football games and person to person things where you pay for stuff with square but as we can see for the past four years they've been consistently growing revenues so that's very great to see net income let's see their net losses back in 2016 were 171 million dollars and then they reduced that to just 62 million the following year in 2017 uh, 2018 they reduced it to a 38 million dollar loss and this past year a profit of 375 million dollars phenomenal round of applause square that's great that's that's just phenomenal trailing 12 months already at 302 million dollars nothing to sweat i'm i'm impressed that they're profitable this this year so far these trailing 12 months that's impressive for them i mean you, you're going through a worldwide pandemic when not so many people are close to each other right now so they can't do that person to person payment and they're still making a profit which just goes to show that it's going to be hard for them to go back to these days where they were losing money so that's great i love to see that in a company total cash for this company is sitting pretty at 2.2 billion dollars very great cool i like that a lot they've got tons of cash to support them. well I, I think so <laughs> i'm gonna take a look at the current liability so far but two billion is two billion that's great total current assets for this company sits at 3.2 so most of that is cash which i like a whole lot uh, very accessible money whenever you need it so that's great to see in a company and they don't have to sell a whole lot of assets to get that money let's take a look at total assets outstanding is sitting at 4.5 billion dollars so about twice as much as they have in cash they got in investments and in properties in technology or whatever else they have as assets so that's great total current liabilities is sitting at two is at 1.7 billion dollars which they still have more current assets than they have liabilities which is great let's take a look at total liabilities only at 2.8 billion dollars asset to debt ratio of a 1.6 which is great that is healthy uh, it, it shows that if they were to have to pay all their debt off right now they could do it and they still have a decent amount of money left over so they have 1.6 times as much assets as they have liabilities there which is great if you guys have uh, watched my walkthrough and stuff like that I talk about the uh, debt to equity ratio and I used to think that was really important but the reason I don't do that anymore and that's when you take total liabilities and you divide it by total equity um, why it's not so important anymore is because sometimes companies sell a little bit of equity to raise funds and they do that but they they usually get the equity back so like in the short term it doesn't matter a whole lot I know Warren Buffett did a speech about it and he said it's not super important even if a company has a negative equity they eventually recoup the equity it's not a huge deal as long as they got assets they're fine I'm gonna take a look at their forward EPS for next year and gonna do a quick buy target for them gonna give it a multiple uh, price to earnings multiple of around a 35x because I think that's pretty fair for a growth company we multiply this by 35 and we get a price of $39.90 a share. So if we were to take about $100 off the share price, we'd get to a pretty reasonable 35 times multiple for this company. But like I said, they're definitely priced for growth. Who knows how profitable they will become, guys? Like I have to I have to be really direct with you guys. These are estimates. It's analysts saying this is what we predict Square will report next year. Like Square could completely blow us away like we saw in 2018 they reported a loss of 37 million dollars and the next year they reported positive 370 million dollars. Like that's just absurd guys and we're going through a pandemic right now. Imagine if there was a healthy economy with Square right now. Uh, this is a stock that could very well be trading at a fair valuation if you guys were to buy this for, for growth. And I didn't even see, do they pay a dividend? No, they don't. That's fine. I wouldn't expect them to. They barely became profitable. It'd be irresponsible of them to be paying a dividend right now. But that's what I got to say about Square. It's pretty much in the same boat as Amazon. But 
I, I think Square has a lot more growth potential than Amazon because they're so much smaller and they're just hitting on all cil cylinders for profit so far. I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. I hope this was a value to you guys. I want to make these live streams more accessible to you guys after we do them because I know not everybody can make it into the live stream. Um, at this time, we've got people from all over the world, which is something that I take a lot of pride in. That's super cool that we've got people from Australia. I know I got a lot of homies in the UK, Canada. You guys are phenomenal. Um, I'm sure a lot of people in Europe. Uruguay, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's great. So it's beautiful seeing people from all over the world. Thank you guys for tuning in. I love seeing all you guys. A lot of you are regulars. I recognize your names. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope to see you guys and even more people in here next time. And let's get some more questions popping off in the chat.